I'm going to begin today with a poem. A gift and a curse, while not quite unique, causing cracks in the shell through which light will peek. For what makes him a man, they deemed him a beast, a unicorn at best, and a mule at the least. If you were to ask me who one of the most interesting case studies over the last decade, uh, roughly, of NBA basketball, I would be hard-pressed to find a better case than the 7-3 Latvian, who was drafted by the New York Knicks, that is a Mr. Kristaps Porzingis. Coming into the league, Kristaps had some serious expectations put on him. Now, it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like he was LeBron James or Zion Williamson. He didn't have that level of hype. But you're looking at a guy who was seven foot three, who had a handle, could exp who could score from all three levels, and was able to use that size on the defensive end as well, getting plenty of blocks to go along with the great offensive output. I went back and I watched some tape of Kristaps when he was still playing uh, in EuroLeague, and something that really stood out to me is I honestly think his tape looks a lot like what current Wembenyama tape looks like. You wanna talk about a guy with an above average handle for his size, the ability to score at all three levels, and pretty much just erase guys on the defensive end with their blocking ability you're gonna see a lot of similarities between those two. The biggest differences that stand out to me are, I feel like Kristaps operated out of the triple threat and uh, face up position a lot more, whereas Victor Wembanyama is typically, he gets to bring the ball up a lot more obviously. And I feel like he's a bit flashier with his dribble package and everything. Um, maybe Kristaps was just a bit more fundamental or maybe Wemby's just nice like that. But I promise you, you want to see some similar tape, go back and watch both of them and, and get back to me. So let's go back to 2015. Christoph Sporzingis gets taken by the New York Knicks with the fourth pick in the draft. If you want to see something absurd, I want you to go back and look at that 2015-2016 All-NBA rookie team. Because at the time, I don't think you realized, I don't think any of us realized how great it really was. Because you got Devin Booker, future two-time MVP Jokic. You got Carl Anthony Towns, you got Kristaps Porzingis, the star of this video, and then you got Jalil Okafor, who was decent. I mean, he got hurt. He he, he was okay, but he got hurt, and he kind of he was kind of a sacrificial lamb in the process. You know, he wasn't he wasn't Joel Embiid, so he just he, he wasn't the guy. It's unfortunate. Back to KP. You want to talk about a guy who came into the league and was pretty divisive from the get go. I mean, you got a guy who's seven foot three. He's showing the ability to shoot the ball he comes in a league and he averages 14 points per game but the shooting is a little bit behind what you'd want but again we're talking about a rookie you know a rookie seven footer who is trying to come into a league where you know at at this point it wasn't like every every center and everybody can shoot like they do nowadays i mean it was still kind of unique it was still kind of unicorn-esque that a big man would come into the league and immediately shoot a 33% clip on like four attempts per game. Now, it's not like he was only getting it done on the offensive end. The guy was pulling in right about two blocks a game in his first three seasons in the NBA. Now, mind you, his rebounds probably weren't as great as you'd want. He uh, was sitting right about seven rebounds per game, which, come on, you're getting outboarded by Josh Hart, I'm pretty sure, in that case. <laughs> So that rookie year showed a ton of promise. Biggest critique is obviously getting the shooting percentages up, but if we fast forward two years, you're gonna have Kristaps' first all-star season where he was scoring 22 points per game. Now, you can definitely, I feel like most, the easily the biggest critique on this season is the fact that he shot under 50% from the field. He only shot 45% from the field, but he was hitting the three ball at a 39.5% pace. So third season All-Star, 22 points per game. Everything's looking up and up for Kristaps. However, as you can tell by looking at his gameplay total, injuries really began to take their toll. He didn't play a full season his first year, missed even more games his second year, and in his all-star season, he actually almost missed about half the season. He only played in about 46 games. And following that, in his fourth NBA season, he missed the entire year due to an ACL injury. As you can imagine, for somebody who is a big man whose entire game is predicated on great footwork, being able to get you know use that height to get the separation he needs and 
impact the ball on both ends that he did kind of starts to go away if you lose that lateral quickness that the ACL tends to give you. So we're pretty much at a point in Kristaps's career that, you know, what what's going to happen? We have somebody who's, ser you know, seriously plagued by injury, missed almost a total of two seasons in his first four years, shown promise as a very unique style of player that the league doesn't necessarily have. You know, what, what, do, you, what do we do with them? And the New York Knicks opted to send him to Dallas. To say people were excited about Kristaps' arrival in Dallas is an understatement. They had Luka Doncic, of, Luka Doncic, of course, and to turn around and add Kristaps Porzingis, they had the, the Euro squad that Dirk would die for. A lot of people had incredibly high expectations for the team. A lot of people had incredibly high expectations for Kristaps Porzingis. And it didn't work. It wasn't a good fit. Something that's interesting is if you look at articles that have come out in the recent years, uh, Chris Topps will actually talk about, he, he's actually mentioned that while he sees Luca as this incredible, great, you know, once in a lifetime player, he sees that he's not the guy to play alongside him. And it was, you know, I think we could see that. It was a questionable, defensive impact on the Mavericks. I mean, he lost that, again, he lost that lateral quickness that allowed him to turn his height into blocks and, you know, get that impact on the defensive end. And he wasn't quite scoring at the capacity the Mavericks needed him to. And it's interesting to look at that because the shooting percentage really started to come up. You're looking at an effective field goal percentage of above 50%, above 55% for the first couple times in his career, but it's still just wrong place, wrong time. And we go forward and he ends up where he is nowadays in Washington. Now, Porzingis has been in Washington for two seasons. However, he's only played about 55 games. He played 17 games his first season with the team and he's currently at 38 games played on this season, which compared, what, how many games have we had? A little, right around 50, I think, right around 40 to 50. So 38 games played for him is huge, and he's made the most of this. He's averaging career numbers, and I feel like a lot of people are overlooking it. He's averaging 22.21.9 points per game, excuse me, 22, we're calling that, we're rounding up. He's at 8.9 rebounds, we're calling that nine as far as I'm concerned, and at 1.5 blocks a game. So he's making some level of impact and I feel like a lot of people are overlooking him right now because he's on a struggling Wizards franchise I mean it's you know him and cuz him and Kyle Kuzma right now are both borderline all-stars I think Kuzma's got the got, has the hype you know he's a big enough name to make it and even you know of course Kristaps has already made it in the past but I feel like there's this sort of aura around him that people don't see him as that level of player anymore. People see him as a guy who's suffered a lot of injury and just can't quite keep up like he used to, despite the fact that he's 27 and he's, you know, I understand, really bad injury, lost some of the, you know, lost some of the athletic ability that made him the player he was. Of course, you know, we all laugh and joke about all oh, seven foot some guys being athletic and stuff, but trust me, if we got in a foot race with them, if we got in a lift off with them, if we got in anything with them, I mean, me or you or me, we're losing 100% every day out of every day. It'll be interesting to see how we go forward from here because honestly, I, you know, Kristaps is just a few good teammates, you know, the right situation away from being maybe like a 25 point per game score, maybe a 25 and 10, two blocks kind of guy. And I mean, I think, you know, I would, I would say it's absurd to not think he's capable of doing that. Will he? Only time will tell. But it really feels like one of those situations where almost the whole league has written him off of his ability to do that. And I'm sure the biggest thing that would help with that is consistency. I mean, he's on his third team in, what, eight, nine seasons? He, he's been through several systems. I mean, the most consistent thing in the guy's life has been injury, sadly enough. I think to wrap things up, I'll just extend it to you. Let me know what you think KP is capable of. Let me know what you think he's going to do with the rest of his career. Is he, you know, is he 
so injury riddled that we're just going to repeat the past. Something I don't think anybody wants, but I'm sure people are more than happy to guess is going to happen. Or are we going to do, like I said, get back to arguably the best level of his playing career to this day? I mean, if he is able to get to that 25 and 10 level, that is serious, serious MVP consideration at that point. I mean, I'm not saying you're going to beat the Luka, Giannis, Jokic types, but you're going to get mentioned in that top 10. I'm certain of it. And again, it's just crazy to me how unique and how gifted of a player he's shown to be. I mean, he's essentially taken the name Unicorn, a term that used to be thrown around, I would argue, pretty pretty fervently, is now almost exclusively bestowed upon him because he is the Unicorn. He is that guy who is so tall, while he's so tall while still being such a good shooter and you know, just not being held back by a lot of those stereotypical big men traits that plagued so many before him. I mean, obviously, it's so easy to look at Victor Wembanyama coming in and, you know, to see the handle he has and to see the ability that he has. But it, it's at the same time, I feel like it's, you know, it's hard not to look at that and say, well, if, you know, Kristaps was a few years later, came up in a bit more maybe a bit more of a free-flowing system he could have looked the same I mean again I said at the beginning look at his tape in EuroLeague and you're gonna see some very similar qualities to current day Victor Wembanyama. but I think that's all I got for the day if you liked what you saw please like comment and subscribe I'm currently six subscribers away from 100 so I would really appreciate if each and every one of you who made it this far would subscribe you could very easily be 16.666 repeating percent of my remaining uh, <laughs> remaining ground. My camera cut off because I don't have enough space to record a video more than like 20 minutes long. Um, but anyway, my name is Zachary Taylor. Thank you for your time today.